Hey there everybody, welcome to Auto Bears and this big beast is the new Sangyong Rexton. Old school. It's a phrase we don't hear anymore when it comes to new cars, especially as we're in an age of hybrids, EVs and interiors that can be operated via a giant touchscreen. But not the Rexton. Oh no, this is proper old school. Firstly, we've got a heavyweight ladder frame chassis which lets you know that this Rexton likes to go off-road. We've got a big diesel lump under this bonnet and there are no hybrids available. And thirdly, we've got an old school interior which is adorned with physical touch buttons. I mean, how old school can you get? Now, the Rexton was revised in 2021 and I've had this revised version for a week and I'm going to let you know if the old school still has some charm about it. Now, when it comes to the Rexton styling, this is a massive improvement over the pre-facelifted version, which was based on the Life concept, which I saw at the Paris Motor Show back in 2016. Now, granted, it was not an ugly car, but it didn't really stand out. It looked very safe and conservative in its design. But with this latest generation of Rexton, oh boy, have Sangyong pulled out all the stops. I mean, firstly, We've got this massive grille, which would actually make Audi and BMW envious. And I also like the redesign in the headlights. Those LED clusters really do work well. But also when you look at the Rexton in profile view, that's when you can see that this is a massive seven-seater SUV and definitely commands some respect on the road because it has got some presence about it. Now granted that the 18 inch alloy wheels do look a little bit small in the arches, but don't forget this is a car that's going to want to go off road. So really you don't want your 21 inch rims. That would definitely get curbed and spoiled. But what I actually really like about the Rexton is now it looks like a really handsome car and Sangyong are on a bit of a roll when it comes to their models. If you recall, I did drive the Corando a couple of years ago and that too was a very handsome car. And you can click on the link at the end of this video to watch my review of that smaller family SUV. But yeah, I am really impressed with the looks of this new Rexton. It really is a handsome beast. But that's enough of looking at the outside of this new SUV. Let's see what it's like in that old school interior. Sat in the front of the new Rexton, you are greeted by a very comfortable and very old school interior. Now granted, it's not the most stylish, but it is ergonomically pretty sound. Now, because this is a very large SUV, getting in and out of the Rexton is very easy. However, I would love to have seen a grab handle on the A-pillar because you do actually have to step up into the Rexton rather than kind of step across and slide into it. So that is something to just be aware of. This isn't taken on the likes of the Skoda Kodiak and Peugeot 5008. This is taken on the big boys like the Land Rover Discovery and the Toyota Land Cruiser. So just be aware of that. And then once you sat in the seats, you find that they are very comfortable and they are proper bear chairs in here and they do hold me in all the right places. Also, this leather is actually a really nice quality and it is heated and ventilated on this ultimate trim. There is plenty of adjustment with electric adjustment and I've also got lumbar support on the driver's seat. And although the front passenger seat is electrically adjustable, that doesn't come with lumbar support. So that's just something to be aware of. When it comes to interior quality, it's for the most part actually pretty good. You do get the impression that it is designed to kind of tackle the test of time and take a bit of abuse over the years. Now we have got soft touch plastics here on top of the dash and on top of the instrument cluster. It is hard plastic here on top of the infotainment system. We've got a bit of fake metal trim here and we've also got leather here on the dash as well. So in terms of the perceived quality, it is pretty good. Now on the centre console here we have got some metal effect trim and on the side here it does feel like it's a soft touch plastic or leather but it's actually not. There's like a special coating on there which gives the impression of it being leather but I do actually like it and it's pleasant to rest my knee on there if I'm going on a long journey. So that is a positive. On top of the doors we have got some soft touch plastic but we have got a little bit of hard plastic on there as well but again it feels of a really good quality and should stand the test of time. One of the good things about this new Sangyong Rexton is that it does come with a seven year 150,000 mile warranty so that's pretty much the best in class. Cubby spaces I'm actually pretty impressed with. We've got some massive door pockets where you can actually see allocation for two bottles of drink and you can get a medium size and a small size bottle in there but it's not lined with any fabric so loose items will rattle around a bit in there. 
Then on the center console up front, we have got a little bit of storage space where you could put your phone or wallet and you can actually cover it so no one can see it. So I do like that. Then next to that, we have got another cover where if I pull it back, it does unveil two cup holders and also two USB charging inputs. Now, one of the cup holders has got a couple of plastic grippers on there, but the other one, they're actually missing and I got a couple of holes there, which is a bit disappointing. Now, personal preference, I would rather have those USB inputs up front here where I could store my phone and actually have it kind of hidden away rather than have a cable come out and perhaps hide in the phone and also right next to your drinks. There's a little bit of a safety issue there, but that's just something that I've noticed having the Rexton for the week. And then behind there, we have got the center armrest, and there is actually a decent amount of space underneath there, along with a 12 volt socket, which is pretty handy. Then we have got the glove box, which is lockable. And we have got an okay amount of space, but the book pack and the uh, locking wheel nut take up about 85% of the room in there. So really that glove box has only got enough room for a pair of gloves which is a bit disappointing. But as I said, it is lockable, so that does make up for it. But yeah, when it comes to interior cubby spaces and storage, it's actually really good here in the Rexton. As I mentioned earlier, this interior is jam packed full of physical buttons, which might be a bit too old school for some, but a joy to behold for others. So just below the nine inch infotainment screen, we've got your shortcut buttons. And then below there, we've got your climate control buttons. Now we have got dual zone climate control here in the Rexton. All the buttons are nicely laid out and very easy to operate when you're on the move. Now, for some reason you can operate those buttons via the touch screen, but why would you do it when the physical buttons are already there? Now, just below there, we have got your buttons for your heated and ventilated seats, and they're very easy to operate when you're on the move, and that's for the driver and front passenger. Then just behind the gear lever, we have got a couple of buttons which operate your electric handbrake and auto hold, your 360 camera, parking sensors, and drive mode select. And then just behind there, we've got a little rotary dial. So if you want to take your Rexton off-road, you can put it from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive high and four-wheel drive low if you're going to get your Rexton into the uh, muddy stuff and possibly, you know, need that extra grunt. So that is handy. And then on the steering wheel, we've got a plethora of buttons. We're on the left-hand side. It operates things like the media controls and the heated steering wheel. And on the right-hand side, we've got your cruise control and your driver data display. And then finally, we've got a couple of buttons here underneath the air vents where they do things like the power tailgate, your lane departure warning, hill descent control and traction control. Now, if I'm going to be a little bit kind of critical, it would be the fact that I would love to see the hill descent control moved over to here because we have actually got a blank space for an additional button. And just having all those kind of four wheel drive off road buttons over here would just be really handy. Now, when it comes to the infotainment screen, we've got a nine inch display with some physical shortcut buttons at the bottom of the screen. And it's actually a pretty good system. It's relatively responsive. You've got TomTom Tom sat nav, as well as Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The only criticism I'd have on it is that it does look a little bit small integrated into the dash. And yes, rivals out there have got larger screens, but it is absolutely fine for day to day use and you shouldn't really have any issues with it. Then in front of the steering wheel, we have got a large digital dashboard display, and that is actually a joy to behold. It's very clear and easy to read when you're on the move, and there's actually quite a bit of customization about it. In fact, you can actually have it where the sat nav screen kind of comes up in the middle of the dash, and there's a no-nonsense feel about it. It literally just kind of, boom, appears, and it's kind of, okay, there it is, there's my speed, and let's kind of crack on with the journey. You can change it so it looks quite funky and kind of BMW-esque in its design. However, unlike BMW, the rev counter and the speedo are the other way around. So everything kind of works the way it should do, which is something I really do like. But yeah, I really do like that display and it actually showing it off to other people. They've been impressed with it as well. They actually think it's better than some other digital displays out there, but I'm not going to name any names. So yeah, the interior of this Sangyong Rexton is actually quite modern in some areas and a bit old school in others. But I really like it. There is a character in charm sitting in here. And as I said, it has got that old school feel, which I think nowadays we do like to see every once in a while. So yeah, I'm really pleasantly surprised by it. And I really do like it. As I said, I just like those USB uh, inputs to be moved to the front storage area and get that hill descent control plonk there. But other than that, I'm absolutely happy with it. But yeah, I think that's enough 
of looking at the front of the Rexton. Let's have a little look at that middle row of seats. Actually, one final thing before we go into that middle row of seats. This possibly has one of the best entry and exit animations of any car I've ever been in, actually. <laughs> because when you get into the, uh, the Rexton, you get this startup where you see the lights and the LEDs come to life. And then it just does the opposite when you get out. But there's like smoke and this atmosphere in the back. It's really, it's just a gimmick, but it's a nice gimmick to kind of greet you and say goodbye to you when you get out of the Rexton. So yeah, I just wanted to point that out before we go sit in that middle row. Right, let's go there now. Sat in the middle row in the Rexton, it is actually really comfortable and really spacious back here. It's just like the front seat of the Rexton. Now firstly, getting in and out is actually a bit easier than the driver's seat because I have got a grab handle here on the B pillar, so that is very handy. And these seats are incredibly comfortable. I could definitely do a short or long journey in the Rexton and have no issues coming out the other end feeling nice and relaxed. As you can see, I've got loads of knee room and headroom is really good as well. In fact, one of the benefits is actually I can recline these seats and as you've watched, I can go really quite far back and if I needed to, I could fall asleep back here. That's actually a really impressive and will definitely aid those who are taller than myself. Now, when it comes to cubby spaces, it again is really good here in the middle row in the Rexton. We've got some massive door pockets. Again, you can get a medium sized bottle of drink in there, but they're not lined with any fabric. So loose items, yes, will rattle around a bit. We have got our airplane style pockets on the backs of the front seats. And we've also got a couple of extra cup holders here on the armrest. And there's also a little button for some additional storage. So that is really handy. Now, when it comes to features, yes, you're not lacking back here. We've got heated outer seats along with the Isofix supports. So fixing the child seat is really easy. We've also got these massive windows as well, which allow a lot of light in and they do open all the way down. And then just below the air vents, we have got two USB charging inputs as well as a 12 volt socket. So you can charge three mobile devices in the middle row of the Sangyong Rexton, which is really impressive. Yeah, all in all, this is turning into a proper bear bus and I am really impressed by it. Now, the one thing I have noticed is that you can't slide the bench forward. So that could hamper room in that third row of seats. And um, well, I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't sit in them. So uh, yeah, let's see what they're like. Sat in the third row here in the Rexton, it's, um, yeah, it's not suitable for adults. It's only suitable for kids. Something like a Kia Sorento where you could get seven adults in the car is definitely the more suitable vehicle, especially if you're gonna use those seven seats on more than the odd occasion. I think with the Rexton, you're gonna spend most of your time with these rear seats down, taking advantage of that massive boot. And also it feels a little bit claustrophobic back here, even though we've got some big windows, but this C pillar is actually quite thick. So it could create a bit of a blind spot for the driver, but also even with these little windows here, it just doesn't feel that airy despite the Rexton size. So yeah, it's not really ideal for adults at all and more ideal for kids and probably for short journeys as well because we don't have any special features back here. Like again, something like the Kia Sorento, we have got control of the air conditioning, we've got USB inputs. Back here, we've only got a couple of little trays and some elastic pulleys to hold some paperwork in place. So yeah, definitely only ideal for kids and probably for a short journey here in the third row of seats in the Rexton. But that's enough of sitting here because I'm trying my best not to kind of sit spread eagled and try and sit comfortably. Uh, I think it's now time we have a little look at that boot. Now opening the boot of the Rexton with all seven seats in place. Let's give it a moment. Presents you with 240 litres of space, which Okay, yes, isn't that much, but then again, with these seven seat SUVs, you'd never get much cargo space with all seven seats up in place. You could probably get a few bags of shopping in there, maybe a couple of weekend bags. However, when you put the rear seats down, like so, and it is really easy, that now moves up to 649 litres of space, which is actually a huge cargo area. And with this kind of parcel shelf in place, you actually have a completely flat load area, which is really handy. And then with all five seats down, you have just over 1800 litres of space. 
Now, it's not devoid of features. We have got a 12 volt socket here on the right hand side, kind of in the little tray area in the third row of seats. We've got a couple of tethering hooks as well. And the only thing that's really missing, apart from a tonneau cover, which I think might be hidden away somewhere, is the fact of we can't get the middle row of seats down from the boot area. We actually have to go to the side of the car in order to do it, which is a little bit old school and a little bit annoying, I will admit, but it is only a minor quibble. And then on the left hand side, we've got a little area where you've got your tools to help with the spare wheel and inflation kit. And on the right hand side, we've actually got a decent little pocket here to stow some items away, which is really handy. And then you can put some features and items underneath here and they won't be seen with the boot closed. So yeah, all in all, in terms of having the seven seats up, it's not the best, but with the rear seats down, yeah, that's a pretty decent boot space. And I think that's enough of looking at the boot capacity of this new Rexton. Let's take it for a drive. So once you get driving in the Rexton, first impressions are really positive. It's a big comfortable SUV, or as I would call it, a big bear bus, but it has got this old school feel about it. In fact, it does feel in a way like a pickup truck, and that's not a bad thing. Now, because this is a big old SUV, visibility is really good. Because of the high seating position, I've got a commanding view of the road ahead. And despite these A-pillars being actually quite thick, I've not found myself looking around them at any junctions, which is a big surprise. Then also the windows on the side of the Rexton are really big as well, so they add to that visibility. But if I look over my shoulder, I do find that there is quite a pronounced C-pillar and it does create a bit of a blind spot. But these massive wing mirrors actually take away any of the kind of distresses you might have about your blind spot. And you also get blind spot monitoring as well. And also rear visibility out of the back of the Rexton is really good. You've got a massive rear screen and the headrests actually aren't too intrusive in your field of view. So all in all, all round visibility in the new Rexton is actually really good. And just in general, the first kind of impressions you get when you drive it are really positive. It is a big improvement over the pre-facelifted Rexton, but you have got this nice old school feel about it and it has got something that a lot of new cars are missing, and that's charm. Now there are only two trim levels to choose from in the Rexton range. There's the entry level Ventura and this top of the range Ultimate. And it's a no brainer, go for the Ultimate, spend the extra 3000 pound and just make sure you get all the toys and goodies that come as standard on the Rexton. And the weird thing is with the Rexton, the only optional extra is really the paint color. I mean, you can get accessories, but not necessarily optional extras. So you can get things like wind deflectors, you can get a side step, you can get the tow bar, which has been fitted to this particular car, but you can't go for like optional extras like a sunroof or adaptive cruise control or a head up display and like add them to the car. The car comes fully kitted out. So in regards to trim levels, just go for the ultimate, spend that extra 3000 pound and just get all the bells and whistles with it. So when it comes to power in the Rexton, there are no hybrids or EVs here. It's just one diesel engine choice. It's a 2.2 litre four cylinder turbocharged unit producing 200 brake horsepower, but more importantly, 440 Newton meters of torque, because that's the number you're gonna be interested in when you wanna go off road. Now, of course, the performance is not gonna set your hair on fire. Nought to 60 takes just shy of 11 seconds, but it's not that type of SUV. And that power goes through an eight-speed Hyundai sourced automatic gearbox, and it's actually a joy to behold. It's really smooth going through the gears. Yes, you can hear them, but you can't feel them. And for day-to-day -day driving, it is seamless and really lovely. And you have got the option to use the paddles on the back of the steering wheel if you want to control the gears. So that is something. Now, economy. So Sang Yong say I should get just shy of 33 miles per gallon on a combined cycle, and that's using the WLTP method. But I'm sorry, Sang Yong, but 
you're liars because I've been getting better than that. I've been averaging 35 to 36 mpg and in fact on one journey I got over 37. So you can beat what Sang Yong claimed which is a big positive. Now of course when you hear those figures you're probably thinking well that's not as good as a Skoda Kodiak or Peugeot 5008 and that's true they are more road based SUV seven seaters but this is going up against the Land Rover Discovery and a Toyota Land Cruiser and that's where the figures do get quite similar. So yeah, in that regard, when you're looking at the Rexton and you're a little bit disappointed by the overall MPG, don't be because it's going against bigger rivals. Now with a lot of these cars you do get your various drive modes and usually it's normal, eco and sport, but not in the Rexton. By default when you start driving it goes straight into eco mode and that's no bad thing because you're going to want to get the best MPG out of the car for day to day driving. Now we have got a winter mode and that essentially preps the car in its all wheel drive setting just if you've got slippery surfaces or if you've got a frosty morning and it has come in handy. And then thirdly, we don't have sport per se, but we have got power. So it's kind of a nice way of Sang Yong saying, this is not a sporty car, but what we can do is have a setting ready for you so all the power's there if you need it. So just don't expect it to give you the rewarding drive of a Porsche Cayenne. Of course, again, it's not that type of SUV. So what's the ride and handling like in the Rexton? Well, ride-wise, I'm really impressed by it. It deals with the bumps and imperfections pretty well. Yes, because of that kind of ladder frame chassis and that old school pickup truck feel, it does mean that when you do go over some potholes and manhole covers, it can boom and vibrate into the cabin. But it's not uncomfortable because we've got these big comfortable bear chairs it still makes it a pretty relaxing car to be in, despite the fact that yes, you could probably see me moving about a bit. So in terms of ride quality, it's actually not too bad. It's perfect for everyday driving. And again, it's just got that old school feel about it. Now, handling wise, <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> I say, oh dear. It's not a sporty SUV. I mean, yes, it goes around the corners. You've got a lot of lean happening when you do. And <laughs> it just, it rewards you in a different way to something like a Porsche Cayenne. You kind of smile because it's not actually understeering when you chuck it into bends, even on a greasy surface like I've got today. But you just get that old school kind of lean and you can feel the weight of the Rexton in the corners. I mean, it does weigh just over two tons but it puts a smile on your face in a different way. And even if you do put it into power mode, that doesn't increase any kind of sportiness in the car. It just means you got the power there a bit quicker than you would do if you got it in eco mode. So in terms of just the driving experience, if you live out in the country, you're gonna absolutely love it. If you're comparing this to something like a Skoda Kodiak or a Kia Sorento, then they are gonna be far better in terms of ride and handling but yes it's got that old school feel about it and as i mentioned earlier it still has charm now with my time in the rexton i have come across a couple of highlights and a couple of low points as well and i wouldn't be doing my job if i didn't tell you about them so firstly I love the kit levels here in the Rexton, particularly in this Ultimate trim. It is jam-packed full of kit, especially when it comes to comfort, convenience, and safety. Now, speaking of safety, that's my first niggle. Some of the safety systems are a little bit oversensitive, namely the lane departure warning, and also the speed camera, which lets you know what kind of speed limit you're in as you're driving through it. And I have on a couple of occasions left, say a 30 mile an hour zone to go into a national speed limit zone, and it still beeped at me quite loudly, and it is quite intrusive. But that's just a minor quibble, but at least it's a safety thing, which, you know, is always good. Now, in terms of the convenience, we have got 360 degree cameras on this Ultimate trim, and I love the fact that there's a 360 view. We can actually spin the car around, just like a BMW X5 or X7, so you can actually see what it's like with your surroundings. Now, that system works perfectly when the cameras are clean. And I've been driving this Rexton when it's been wet and muddy and just horrible conditions. And those cameras, particularly the front and the rear camera, get very dirty very quickly. And then that 360 camera 
just becomes useless, unfortunately. So I would like to see Sangyong get something in place where you get like a little squirt of water just to give it a bit of a clean every time perhaps you do the front or rear wipers and kind of clear the screen. So that's just another niggle there as well. But all in all, the big thing I've really loved about the Rexton is the value for money. Again, a lot of people seem to compare this to a Skoda Kodiak, a Kia Sorento, which actually is more expensive than this, and the Peugeot 5008, and they shouldn't. If it goes up against the Land Rover Discovery and the Toyota Land Cruiser, this is immense value for money, and the fact that you can take this thing properly off-road is a big selling point for it. And that's why a lot of people, when they go for the Rexton, they do kind of stick with it. They don't really go to other brands. Also, the fact that you've got a seven year, 150,000 mile warranty is another big highlight and factor. I actually think that's class leading. I mean, in terms of the seven years, I think only Kia and MG can rival it, but the 150,000 miles, wow, that's, that's letting the customer know that they're expecting you to use this as a workhorse and really get the miles out of it. So that is a huge positive. So yeah, in terms of kind of the highlights and the lowlights, well, yeah, the safety system is a bit too intrusive, but it's jam-packed full of kit. It's great value for money, and we just need to get those cameras sprayed. But other than that, brilliant. So what are my thoughts on the new Sangyong Rexton? Well, I really like it. It's got charm, it's got character, it's got great value for money when you compare it to the Discovery and the Toyota Land Cruiser. And it's just a big improvement over the pre-facelifted version. It's a very rugged car and it's a very niche car as well because not many people are gonna be after a proper workhorse like this. And if you're gonna buy this just to have the kids in the car and use it as like a Chelsea tractor, no, you're wasting your money. Go get a Kodiak, go get a 5008. But if you are after a workhorse where you are gonna take this off-road, if you are gonna to tow with it as well, I mean, this can tow three and a half tons, then you've got yourself an absolute bargain, especially when compared to the Land Rover Discovery and the Toyota Land Cruiser. It is one of those cars where you don't mind it getting dirty, you don't mind it getting scratches because it's a proper workhorse. You sit in here and you can just tell it's designed to deal with the nitty gritty. And I'm just gonna move across here to allow this car to go by. There you go. You don't mind doing that, but if you're in something perhaps like a Land Rover Discovery, you might be afraid of curbing an alloy or getting the paint scratched. I don't think you would in this. You just want that workhorse. And with that seven year, 150,000 mile warranty, you're covered. And that's the thing I really love about the Rexton is it is, I think, a perfect all-rounder. It is great on-road, really, for what it is. It's great off-road. It's got huge practicality, great value for money. It looks good as well. I mean, this has got serious presence. And it's value for money against its two more expensive rivals. So yeah, the Sangyong Rexton, I really do like. It's a niche workhorse and a niche car, but by damn, it's very good at what it does. So everyone, I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Sangyong Rexton. If you've got any questions about the Rexton, please do not hesitate to put them down in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notifications icon to let you know when I, Dave the Auto Bear, bring out a new video. Of course, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I always advise you follow on there as well for additional content, including live videos and still images. But in the meantime, guys, keep yourself safe, maintain your social distancing, wash your hands, wear a mask, and I will catch you all in the next video. So take care, everyone, and bye-bye.